What's up guys, it's time to start with our reactor selection in order to maximize selectivity. So we're going to choose first a reactor and second how we are going to operate that reactor. We are going to include not only that, the concentrations we've seen before, we're going to include concentrations of other substances as well. We will modify and propose general reactor arrangements. So we're going to see what type of reactor is convenient, in what arrangements, high temperature, low temperature, bypass or recycle, shall it be included, or shall you avoid them, or is indifferent, and the inlet outlet flows, just to tell you a little bit off. Now, let's do some maths, you know, I don't like that much, doing lots of math, but we need to do it here, especially because we will see this interaction here, and here, and here. So, remember you have A turns into the desired product and A turns into the undesired product. You have K1 and K2. Then, if you were to get the rate of reaction, you have them here. Let's calculate selectivity, it's essentially the rate of T, which is here, and the rate of U, which is here. And you will have K1 and K2 dividing, you will have K alpha 1 divided by K alpha 2 and K beta 1 divided by CB beta 2. So this will be our master equation. Let's go and check out case 1. Case 1 is when you have alpha bigger than alpha 2 and beta 1 is greater than beta 2. So this is positive and this is positive. That's an easy one because you have as we did before, we have A and B here, and you want also you want to make it a high number here, so C A and C B must be high. How do you use that or how do you know that you will need a tubular reactor because there are high concentrations here, and you will need a batch. Either of two either of these two reactors will help. Now let me explain you about the tubular reactors. So probably you know, there's a tube here, and you have A, you have B, and yeah, let's say concentration of B at initially, and concentration of A initially. As they go there, keep going, 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 they convert, I don't know, maybe into our desired product. So, the concentration here, it's at the highest. They will never be high, because they will be losing and losing, reacting, reacting, you lost materials, so the highest concentration goes here, and that's what we want, we want high concentration, so that's why this reactor is very, very recommended. Now the batch in the other side is similar, but of course you don't have a flow, right? You imagine you have A and B, and they're going to form C. They are very high concentrated, only A and only B. They are everywhere. So that's why it suits perfectly to our reaction, or at least to case 1. Now probably you're wondering what's case 2. Let's do it exactly the same for alpha, now we change beta. Uh, beta 1 is, uh, let's see, this is beta 2, so B is now backwards. What does that mean? That means when we want to substitute this here, we will have a negative because you know that we define this as this here, so you have the negative. What does that uh, exponent to the negative means? Division. So this one is very interesting. You have, you must increase CA and you must decrease CB. The concentration of A must be high and the concentration of B must be low. So let's see how to do this. How can we achieve a high concentration of A but a low concentration of B? First thing first, the semi-reactor, or the semi-batch reactor, sorry. Uh, remember, we have the inlet here, and we have already load A. So, here we have a high concentration of A, probably. It's A is everywhere. Actually, it's everything here. And we are going to feed B very slowly. So, imagine when we drop a little bit, imagine one drop or two drops, you have a huge concentration of A. So, that's... What do we want? We want high concentration of A, low concentration of B. Okay, that's why it's a very good idea to use the semi-batch. Now, there's another tubular or PFR we can use, but we need to use side streams, and that's very important. 
we're going to make A is going to be always high and B we're going to use them as low as possible we want to mix a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here so when it's something like this you're going to have the small drops, well not drop, something like that, the slow quantities when you have a huge stream of A that also makes the process possible and probably you know that many CSTRs may model a, P, a PFR so let me show you CSTR in series with side streams you have A and you have a little bit of B of course so you make them react and you still have a lot of A and your product so you change it and you have still as I told you a, a lot of A so let's give it a little bit of B more here and you have more product and then you have still not so much but let's say still you have a, a high concentration of A and then you have here low concentration of B you're going to end up with the product you want because you have high concentration of A throughout the system and you have a low concentration of B in every stage so that's awesome uh, I already explained you but let me just let's imagine you have the first slow quantity of B and you have huge concentration of A, you have A everywhere so a little bit of C B when it gets and mixes, if you were to mix this you will have a lot of moles of A per mole of B so let's say B is low concentration and A is high concentration which is what we want side stream essentially the same stuff you have let's say throughout the system you have a lot of A A A A A A A and you put a little bit of B here and you put a little bit of B here a little bit of B here so everywhere you have low concentrations of B that's what we want once again and the final CSTR I told you it's like a PFR you can model actually a PFR with many CSTRs but I think it's already understandable you have low concentrations here actually if you were to set this part right here it's essentially a continuous a semi-batch reactor you are setting up B where you already have A let's go to case 3 it's kinda different you have this different here and this different here so my A and B are going to be low here negative and negative which means they are dividing and what does that mean? means that we want low concentrations of A and low concentrations of B in order to increase my selectivity so we can use CSTRs, you know CSTR is the boss in low concentrations or even a tooler with recycled probably you remember from last uh, exercises that I told you you could uh, decrease the concentration of a product with your recycle so let's do it normal CSTR you know it, you know the drill you have a concentration here which is low and you have an initial concentration here which is high so you pour them and then they mix instantly mix so you have low concentration of A and low concentration of B which is what we want and then we have the PFR which is the tubular reactor with recycle, why recycle? because let's say we have high concentration here of A and B but we have a huge amount, let's say this is in total 5 moles or well, let's say we are recycled 10 moles we have a recycle of 10 moles we will have here lower quantities and when they achieve the reactor they will still be in low quantities which is what we want and our final case, remember our master equation here we have this alpha 1 minus alpha 2 and beta 1 minus beta 2 will be essentially when this is lower but this is higher so how do you do that? this, this one here, this one here this one here, this one here or normally as we want a concentration of A to be low and a concentration of B to be high how we do this is normal operation of CSTR and the tubular reactor recycle oops, here, entry so how do we achieve this? we've seen it before exactly now we're going to change A and B of course before we got A here in the semi-batch 
and we got B here, but now we have it backwards, so we just change it. And of course, before it was here B, and this one was A, but we want C B high, so let's change that and C A low. So we're going to have feed and feed here. And once again, we got this before as A, and this was B, B, B. But since we want now the reverse, we want high concentration of B, we choose high concentration of B, and the low concentration of A, which is here. Now, semi batch, already, I already explained it, but let me just give you a fast introduction. You have a lot of B, and you have a little bit of A. That's your low concentration of A, high concentration of B. Tubular reactor is the same. You have high concentration of B at the beginning, actually in almost all the reactor, and you pour small quantities of A. So you will have low concentration of A, high concentration of B. And CSTR with side stream is essentially a combination, but nonetheless I'm going to give you an explanation. So you have B. B will be high concentration throughout the system. You're just going to pour a little bit of A here, a little bit of A here, and a little bit of A here. That's why the concentration of A is still low, concentration of B is high. And yeah, I have an example, but I actually think it's a generic example because they use alpha 1, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2, and they tell you consider all possible combinations. We've already uh, seen that. You have case 4, case 3, case 2, and case 1. So the problem is essentially done. If you really want to see that in a, let's say, solved manner, check out my other examples. Go to my webpage, there's a lot of examples, exercises, problems, all that you need for studying, it's here. Go to courses, reactor engineering, solve problems section, and go directly to the multiple reactions module. And we're done with section two, which is, I think, a very important part, because C reaction is very simple. Actually, I don't think we're going to take out or need more than 10 minutes. So see you there. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.